You will never get pop on your ground stroke if you don't master this one key thing that I'm gonna talk about in this video. A lot of us, you know, there's like this desirable sound that we don't seem to understand and maybe other players at your club or people you may know, their ball sounds different from yours and you just can't wrap your mind around how they get the ball to sound like that, how they get it to move that fast and I'm gonna let you in on the secret. So firstly, it's one thing and it really just has to do with getting your body through the shot first. It's actually transfer of body weight, but there's so much misinformation around this, how to do it correctly. You know, uh, online coaches, they have videos where they watch another player and they draw lines and they talk about angles and complex things with which seem sophisticated, but there's really no real application to it on the court. So today I'm on court and I'm gonna explain to you how it actually works. So watch me here. I'll give you the forehand first as an example of what you really need to do. You need to make sure that you load all of your energy, okay? You need to get the most output for the effort that you're putting in. A lot of people are working way too hard and they get you know, no give back because what they're doing is pretty inefficient. So what you wanna do is start swinging the racket way less. You wanna simplify your backswing into a unit turn, which is really just a grip change, and then rotating the shoulders, hips, torso, and toes. So on the forehand, it would look like this. You simplify the unit turn, and you load the legs so, so much, okay? You wanna be on your toes, okay, ready to pounce. Okay, like a wild cat ready to you know digest its food okay and what you're gonna do is using the left arm start pulling yourself into the shot and it starts with the toes the hips the chest then we're kind of swinging from here and the idea here is that we release all of our built-up energy you know our bow and arrow before we contact the ball okay because some people will do a good job of loading but then they'll just go with the arm the reason why you have no pop is because you're sending your arm on a lone mission in which it's not going to survive. Your arm weighs about 7 to 15 pounds, maybe, and the rest of your body makes up over 90% of your weight. So why wouldn't you try and get that behind your shot in order to make things easier? So instead, I recommend losing all tension in your arm when you swing losing all. And at first you may find you lack control and you can watch some of my other videos on how to, you know, simplify the technique, but this is just about pop on the ground strokes. Okay. And what you do is you throw everything into it and your arm needs to trail behind you essentially like a whip or dead weight. It's really just along for the ride. Okay. It's much like a pitcher. Now watch this. I'm going to paint a mental diagram for you so you can see, but imagine a pitcher. The pitchers that throw the fastest when they throw, it looks like they're not even trying, right? It looks like they're just, their arm is moving so fast and that's because they get lag. Watch me, this is how a pitch works. And the arm is the last thing to come through, but we've thrown our entire body behind it. A forehand is the same thing, watch. Boom, 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 and then I let go. Do you see what I mean? A pitcher is not gonna throw like this. Just the arm, but that's how a lot of people hit forehands. A pitcher is gonna hit like this. And the arm comes in last. A lot of people will never get pop on their forehand because they hit like this. And the people who do get pop on their forehand hit like this. And the racket comes last except it's happening so quickly that you maybe just don't notice it. And there's so much noise and distraction with these, you know, online slow motion videos that it's really hard to understand this if someone's never told it to you. And it wasn't until it was pointed out to me that I had, you know, no clue. I was clueless, just like some of the people who may be watching this. And it's okay because over 90% of tennis players hit this way. So you are not alone. Now on the backhand, I have a one-handed backhand, but 
I'm going to basically show you, you know, a similar thing. The transfer of body weight, we build it up and we want to simplify the unit turn. Okay. And we go boom and we shift our weight through the ball. Now on the backhand, we want to stay with the ball and we actually don't want to open up. We want to stay sideways and stay with it. But my body weight is still shifting this way through the hit. And it goes from back, heel to toe, to front. And then we come up after. But still, a lot of people just don't get athletic on this shot. And I like to show people that on the one-handed backhand, it's not as much arm as you think. They think, oh, I got to use my arm so much because it's just one hand and I got to be big and strong. But no, it's all, it's all technical. You got to be so loose. There's no tension in my arm right now. And I'm essentially flinging my shoulder off of my body as somewhat of a lever. But all the power is actually coming from my core, my hips, and my legs. Okay, and it's this little boom, kind of a corkscrew action where my midsection is twisting slightly. You just can't see, but if I was to take off my shirt, it would become a little bit more apparent to you. And the only thing that's different from the forehand is that we don't keep going because the backhand, it needs to be a little bit more precise. It's not as natural. And especially on the one-hander, you have to stay sideways. On the uh, two-handed backhand, you can open up a little bit more. Although I really don't recommend it because then you start using the arms and dragging them across the body. So it's still good to stay with the ball. And then you can open up after. But we're always driving with the body, very loose, okay? No tension in the arms. If you do, you know, take my advice. I think you'll find you'll actually get pop very quickly. And then you can worry about everything after. But just having clarity on this one thing can help you become way more confident on the court. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more educational tennis content. Ciao. If you like what you learned here, I recommend you take the next step and go into my online course because it takes what I teach in my videos and it builds on it. And it will show you how to gain power and consistency on the court and enjoy tennis for the rest of your life. The link is down below.